Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Associate Reformed Presbyterian Church as we come together for our Tuesday morning devotion. And today we're going to be reading from Titus 3 4. As we look at this passage of Scripture, let us go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has filled us with all good things through his Son. To God, we pray as we consider your ways and as we meditate upon your grace that you will strengthen us in purpose and in the focus that we should have upon your glory and upon what awaits us in the heavenly places. Dear God, may uh, you use uh, these words today to move us forward and to show us more clearly how blessed we are to be sons and daughters of the living God. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, today we turn again to Titus 3, 4, the goodness and loving kindness of God, our Savior. How sweet it is to see Jesus fellowshipping with his own beloved people. There can be nothing more delightful than when the Holy Spirit leads us into this fertile field of delight. Let the mind for a moment consider the history of the Redeemer's love, and a thousand evidences of his kindness most certainly come to mind. And when we think about why we have been given so many examples of the Redeemer's love, it has been all to draw us to Christ and to weave the mind of Christ into the thoughts and emotions of the renewed soul. When we meditate upon this amazing love, and see the head of the church endowing her with all his wealth and power, our souls may well faint for joy. For who is able to endure such a weight of love? Even a partial sense of it is more than we can handle. And sometimes the Holy Spirit grants us even more than the soul can contain. And when we think how transforming a complete view of it must be, we are overwhelmed. But this is what heaven will be like, for we will see the fullness <coughs> of God and the fullness of all that he has done, and it will fill us with such joy and happiness that can hardly be understood. When the soul shall learn to discern all the Savior's gifts, and we are granted the wisdom to fathom them and the time to meditate upon them, we are reminded again that heaven alone is sufficient for the time necessary. But we must make use of the time that we have here on earth. For we see in the Lord's day worship in Sabbath keeping, in fellowship, in prayer, a foretaste, a bite, a morsel of that full meal we will have in heaven. But dear Christian, do not be discouraged. That morsel that you have is more than sufficient for the trials and tribulations of life. For it is in heaven we will then commune with Jesus in a more intimate manner than at present. But who can imagine the sweetness of such fellowship? It must be one of the things that have not entered into the heart of man, but that God has prepared for them that love him. If we could burst open the door of our Joseph's granaries and see the plenty that he has stored up for us, we would be overwhelmed with his love. By faith we see in a mirror dimly the reflected image of his unbounded treasures. But when we actually see the heavenly things themselves with our own eyes, how deep will be the stream of fellowship in which our souls shall bathe. Until then our loudest songs shall be reserved for our loving benefactor, Jesus Christ our Lord 
whose love to us is wonderful, surpassing the love of a man for a woman. Amen. You know, when we do think more deeply about the love of the Lord Jesus Christ to us, it should fill us with such a reminder of what it means that God is love. Because God has loved us, we have life eternal. Because God has loved us, we have all the answers that we need in this life. Because God is love, we love one another. And so, as we go about our daily tasks today, as we go about thinking upon that which is good and holy, let us remember that everything that we have, all that we see around us is a part of God's good gift to us. And so our response should be worship. Our response should be thanksgiving. Our response should be joy unending. For consider again what it means that the Lord God, who made the heavens and the earth, has loved us with an everlasting love. It's amazing, isn't it? Find rest in that truth today. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, shall have everlasting life. This is love, that a man lays down his life for his friends. Brothers and sisters, remember these truths, for they will get you through the most difficult of times. And they'll also humble you when you think yourself too high. For what are we in comparison to the God above? But those whom he has rescued from death and given that name which is above every name. May the Lord bless you today. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. For he is our God and we are his people. Take care. God bless.